and hello everyone. This is probably one of the video you were the most excited for, how to port your 1.1 project to RPG Builder 2.0. I really worked hard to make this process as easy and quick as possible, as well as ensuring that you don't have that much to do on your database after the upgrade process. So before getting started, make sure that you have a backup of your Unity project, either on version control or a copy of your Unity project. And once you did that, we can get started. So the first step is to say goodbye to the 1.1 editor, which we loved for a while, but 2.0 is a lot better. So yeah, let's just um, say goodbye once and for all and close the editor, as well as closing the editor scene loader if you had it open, because Unity is going to throw errors if we don't uh, close us now. Next, I want you to go under resources, select database and simply drag and drop it under the asset folder. As you can see now, it is no longer in the blink folder, so it is safe of whatever we do to the blink folder. Um, lastly, uh, for this part, I will want you to do the same for whatever folder you have in there with your own things in it, such as prefab, scenes, etc. Usually, it's not a recommendation to save those in the blink folder anyway, but let's say that I wanted to save my scenes. Um, I will call this my scenes, and I'm just going to drag and drop this outside. So now you can see that we have the database, my scenes, and the blink folder. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and select every folder from characters to script, and I'm actually going to delete those. Um, this is simply because 2.0 is really much more than an update, it's almost a new project at this point, and a lot of files, a lot of script, a lot of things, pretty much everything changed, some things got completely rewritten, etc. So we don't really want to continue with those files, it's almost a reinstallation of RPG Builder while keeping the work you did. So it's a very tricky operation on my side, on your side it will be very easy as you will see. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And after this, uh, it's time to import RPG Builder 2.0. So you go to the asset store or the package manager, up to you. Make sure you update to 2.0 first, and then you click on import. And when you do so, it should show this window here from Unity. And this is pretty much the only very important part. And it's nothing complicated, but just pay attention to what I'm doing here. So as you can see, we can collapse the Blink folder. This is fine. We don't have to tweak anything here. We want everything from Blink imported. But as you can see here, Unity is trying to import the 2.0 database inside your database, which is definitely not something we want, right? So I'm going to just untick the database folder. And as you can see now, everything is disabled. So I can just collapse this. And here we have uh, my scenes. I'm not going to uh, import my scenes either. I don't want anything to be overridden here. So here now we will only have whatever is whatever um, that is part of Blink imported, but not the database, okay? So I'm just going to hit import and you will do the same and wait until this is done. Okay, it is done for me. RPG Builder was imported. As you can see, we have some warnings, but otherwise you can just clear those. They're not going to bother us at all. And the next thing here, uh, I'm going to make some space. And now what we're going to do is uh, move back our files as well as our database back where they should be. So here I'm going to drag and drop the database under resources and my scenes under RPG Builder. Um, however, there is a scenes folder here now, but it doesn't really matter because this is from the 2.0 files, right? Um, anyway. We can either combine those, but it's not really uh, important right now. Now, something that is important for is to go under the packages folder and double clicking this uh, database upgrade package here. As you can see, it's not going to um, do anything wrong to your database. I made sure of that. All of this is disabled. It's only going to import things you don't have yet in your project. So let's go ahead and click import. We can clear this as well. And now I hope you're ready to see the new 2.0 editor because this is the first time you will see it in your project. Now you might be a bit afraid and be like, hey, Thomas, uh, you're nice, but where are my abilities? Where are my things here? Well, um, as you can see here, uh, well, for example, the RPG Builder editor told us, hey, you don't have a types here, you need to create some. That's normal. This is because your 
let's say all database, so your 1.1 database is not compatible um, right away with 2.0. I'm not kidding when I say uh, a lot of things have been completely rewritten. The database entry structure has been rewritten, which means that um, as of right now, as it is, RPG Builder do not recognize your database as a 2.0 database. But if we go under utility, upgrade to 2.0, and here we have a magic button. So here you can feel free to click convert database to 2.0. This might take a bit depending on how big your database is. So I'm going to pause and um, record again when this is done. And it's done for me. And now again, we have warnings, but we can just clear that. And now if you go under combat abilities or whatever else in your database, you can see that your database is back. So that's really good news, right? And um, it's pretty much done. Uh, your project is now under 2.0 and that was it. I'm sure a lot of you guys expected it to be harder and um, a bit more complicated, but no, like I said, I really spent a lot of time making sure this worked well. But now we go to the second part of the video where I explain the things that after this process you have to look at and do. So one of the first thing is if we go under character and races, here you can see that it is a bit different than before. Now you can have as many genders as possible. Genders can also, of course, be used for many other things, uh, different appearances, for example. And here, as you can see, uh, we have two choices only, which are which were the two previous, you know, predefined genders. And in this case, we can simply go ahead here and drag and drop the character prefab. Now I suggest you to use the default one that I have under the characters folder. And after you're done with all that, of course, create your custom character prefab with, uh, by following, you know, um, a video for that. Now we're going to set maybe an icon and, uh, for the animators here, I'm just going to drag and drop the, um, rest override here up like so. And here, um, I'm going to go ahead and save. Now here under uh, character, races, and still on the human, you can see that we have the uh, level field. If you don't see that, you might have to reload the editor after all this. So we just go ahead, close it, reopen. Uh, it might need to reinitialize some things. But yeah, anyway, here it's important that we assign a level template because now um, that, these are things I'm going to explain in other videos, but races can have their own level templates. So we go ahead and do that. Another thing is uh, if we go under combat and stats and look at the health stats, you can see that the vitality action here, which actually was um, the death action uh, when health reaches zero is empty now because the game actions got a huge update, uh, which allows us to trigger hundreds of game actions. So what we need to do here is quickly go under template, game actions, create one called death, add game action, type death, save, done. And now we go under combat stats and here we just assign the def one so now we can uh, finally die again I guess uh, that's a weird way to say it but yeah so this is done another thing I want to mention is for example if I go to the strength stat um, as you know in RPG Builder before if you wanted to create for example fire damage, fire resistance, fire penetration, you could and you st still can, obviously, but you had to go back and forth the stats to set up the armor and the, or rather the resistance and penetration. Now you can just go, for example, to fire damage and here directly you can assign resistance and penetration. So you no longer have the opposite stats here. Uh, it's the same thing, it's just simpler and in one place. So you can go ahead here and select uh, fire resistance and um, fire penetration and you can do that for your other custom stats and here for example you might have to reassign the uh, damage type as well. Now I want to show you something in abilities for example if we go to fireball uh, I changed the way the hit settings were presented. Uh, it was a bit confusing to a lot of people before. Uh, if you remember, it was its own section here. Now it's very simple. You have checkboxes. So for example, fireball can it hit enemies, neutral, allies, player, and so on. And you can just tick this. And this will be based on the NPC's um, uh, alignment, right? So it's going to check on its own, like is the player an enemy? In this case, you know, we can hit or easy focusing a mob that is an enemy to him and so on.
If we go a bit under here, under effect applied, before we had a section called conditional effect. Uh, this was fun, but very limited actually. Um, I overall did with something like completely, completely awesome in my opinion. Um, this basically lets you add as many actions as you want on your abilities that will be triggered when you hit. And these actions can have a requirement. I say can because you don't have to assign something here. It could just be an action, but you can have requirements and you can have game action. So just like we have, you know, we just created a dev game action here. You could literally have this on your ability and it will instantly kill yourself in this case or the target. Uh, but you can of course have requirement templates here. And if we create a new one, here you have hundreds of options available. I'm not going to show all of that in detail, but yeah. So you lost your conditional effect, but for a system that is a lot better and allowing not only the same thing as before, but much, much, much more. Another thing to note is that the dialogue got their um, game actions and requirement also updated with the new, you know, uh, game action and requirement things that you can create here. So those templates. Um, so you will need to go ahead and go to your dialogues and reassign those uh, as you create them. The items on use actions also uh, got replaced by game actions. So again, uh, not only you can do the same as before, but much more, but you need to go ahead and create your game actions and reassign them here. And if you go under settings um, and uh, economy items, and weapon, weapon animation override. You can see that the weapon types here have been set to default again. So just simply go here and select whatever uh, was assigned before and save. And lastly, um, if we, for example, looked at a scene, in this case, I'm just going to edit manually, but if you went to one of your scene and had some interactive nodes, as you can see, this component is now deprecated, but it has been again replaced with something a lot better that I'm going to show you now. So instead of interactive node, now we have interactable object and not only looks better, but it has hundreds more features than before. So it can be fully persistent. Uh, I'm going to, of course, make a dedicated video on that. And it can have requirements that we already covered in this video. It can have actions. So as many as you want. And as you can see now, each interactive or rather interactable object can be of any type you want. So you could have an effect here happening, a quest, uh, give some character experience as well as trigger some unity events or again some um, game actions as you can see always as long as you can use game actions pretty much in any system you can literally do anything you want in RPG builder which is really cool it can have some visual effects triggered on the object or the user so in this case you and animations as well so animation on the interactable object or on the um, player and sounds and then uh, things that we already had before. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let's remove this uh, from the main menu because we don't need it here. And let's go in game and make sure everything works well. And it does not work well. So as you can see here, we have an error. And I just forgot that uh, in this case, we need to use the updated main menu scene. So that's very simple. You basically can use your own that you already made, but you will port the uh, main menu um, UI extra to it. So we go under scenes here, main menu. We don't save this one, we don't need. And we can now go in game. Can make a new character. Ah, yes. If you do get this prompt also, all start points need to be spent. It's because in the um, 1.0.8 um, demo, the one I'm on right now, we had this setting on. So if we go under settings, character, stats, we can untick this, must spend all stat points and go ahead now. There we go. And now we are in the 1.1 demo with the new character prefab, of course, but we're going to tweak this uh, later. But as you can see, um, it feels good to finally be in game and know that everything is working well again. Um, there is some, There are some errors here. And the reason for that is because we have some NPCs here and NPC spawners. Um, this, as you can see, also got a big update, but your NPC right now in the uh, editor are not ready to be used with 2.0. And I'm going to show you in another video how to set them up. So don't worry about that part. For now, if you want to avoid the errors, just disable the NPCs in your scene, save, and once you go back to the scene again, 
uh, you're not going to have errors. But that's it. Uh, we're in game. Uh, we have our character. We have everything working. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all we all wanted, I guess. Uh, because, you know, as I'm sure for a lot of you, um, the idea of upgrading was a bit scary. Hopefully it went well. Let me know um, if you have any issue as you do it. As you, as you saw, I even myself got some errors, but it was good that I fixed them live so that you guys could see it in case it happens to you as well. Uh, definitely let me know on Discord if you need help. And let me know also what you think of this update process. Hopefully it was not too frustrating, not too complicated. And um, I'm going to try to keep it that way for future updates as well. So thanks for watching. See you in a future video and have fun with RPGP 2.0 now.